Adventures in Rural Knife Making with Hog, Hera, and Half Dog Fred. William Hovey Smith, 2017. I'm the author of Backyard Deer Hunting and also the owner of a new company, Hovey's Knives of China. And what went down is I was working away at my knife shop, as you will see, and dogs raising cane in the backyard. I went to see, and they had a hog cornered in there. And so I went in the house, got my gun, and we took it. These are some of the projects I had going on, including working on the boning knife that I actually used to dress the hog. We're going to work on three carbon steel blades. The top one is a Dexter boning knife, which originally had a plastic grip. The middle one with a wooden grip is a fillet knife. And the bottom one is a general butcher, and that's an old hickory. So what we're going to do with the bottom two is just refurbish the wood and clean up the steel. And on the top one, uh, we're also going to clean up the steel and rehandle. The interesting thing about this knife are these flats on the grip. This is a wooden grip. And this is a fillet knife. And once we grind these flats and clean it up a little bit, uh, this is going to be a right handsome little knife. Well, we're, we're not done. But you can see how it's coming. To catch up on a few of our Billy Joe Rubido knife projects, uh, in the vise here, we have that Dexter boning knife, and we elected to put rosewood scales on it, and this is what the rosewood block looked like when we started. And we now have the scales trimmed, and of course I've just cut the pins off with a hacksaw. And I use the hacksaw to keep from generating heat and breaking the glue bonds on these pins, which are temperature sensitive. And this is what our English blade turned out to be. Uh, that rest did not work. It was actually a hazard on the work surface. So I now just have turned it into a wooden guard and guards are unusual on chef knives, but okay, this has got one. So that one's ready to go. We have polished this Ontario blade, and this has a couple of coats of stain on it. Uh, I haven't put polyurethane on it yet, but I will. Now this blade, I say polished, is actually been wire brushed. And this is the finish I like on these old carbon steel knives. I just put them on a brush and I get rid of the excess uh, uh, rust and discolorations. You can read the, the legend on it. Uh, you can read the stamping on it very, very well. So uh, that's what I do with this one. This is a cake slicing knife. Uh, the blade is very good steel, hard steel. Didn't have an edge on it hardly at all, if any. But I have put an edge on it and just uh, cleaned up the grip a little bit. So that's a good knife. This is a butcher knife. It's a modern stainless blade. Uh, this is a U.S. blade. And it's called Flint Stainless Vanadium USA, it's Seth. So, uh, and in fact this was. This was a harder than usual uh, stainless steel. And so now we've taken a rather grody knife and made it attractive again and restored these finger grooves, which are unusual, but actually not too good because they only fit one hand in the world, and that's not mine and most other people's. So that particular adaptation was not especially useful. Now, I don't recommend it. Just too specialized. Okay. And here is a slicer, and we put McCarter handles on it. This is one of the Perfection series uh, out of there. You will recall we did a uh, chef's knife out of that same set. So that one's ready to go. And this is another slicer. 
uh, we have just polished the grips and put an edge on it, made it more handsome than it were. Our little sow belly slicer, which you've seen several times now, actually. And our pan scraper. And a boning knife. This is an interesting knife. Uh, it's an L.L. Bean blade. And it's so marked and we were able to clean up the grips but leave the markings, uh, which is good. So L.L. Uh, Bean Freeport, Maine is what the stamping is on the grips. And that turned out to be rather handsome from a, well, rather well rusted, dull relic. So now this is a useful uh, boning or fish knife now. Actually, I think it's more like a fish knife. So that's where we are right now with our Billy Joe Rubido series. This is Hobie Smith, the backyard sportsman. And one of those adventures in rural knife making. Yep. Uh, whilst I was doing polishing work on this skinning knife, dogs surprised me with a bunch of barking. And what they were barking about was a hog right here in my yard. Well, I shoot muzzle-loading guns. And guess what I've been trying to get a kill with? A muzzle-loading gun right here. A Woodman's Arm 50 caliber rifle. So we had been hunting with it with a fall without seeing any game in front of it. And here was game right in my yard. And so, needless to say, I shot him. And here it lay. So we have some work to do this afternoon. Uh, it has been raining in Georgia a lot, and that's why the hogs are up here in the uplands rather than down in the swamps. They've been flooded out a little bit. And so uh, one happened to wander through in the wrong place at the wrong time. So we have some work to do with our life. One of my more outrageous projects is a Billy Joe rib chopper, and this hog provided an appropriate test. Now this rib removal is best done with two people, with one holding the side of the ribs and ready to catch them when they're chopped free from the rest of the carcass. Our hog butchering has proceeded apace, and we have proceeded to use uh, two of our recent knives. Uh, the little top one is our skinner. And the bottom one is a boning knife, which I had just in the process of putting a handle on when dog spotted the hog. So it seemed only just that it get used. And it has been, and did pretty good, by the way. Uh, the carcass itself right now looks absolutely terrible. It looks like it was done by somebody who'd been up since 2 o'clock in the morning, already done a day's work before he ever shot the thing. And, uh is dog tired and all of that is absolutely true so uh we are going to get it done now there is one thing you've all been wanting to see and that's the use of the rib chopper well we have a critter here that has ribs so we're going to bring it out and we're going to use it and this is said rib chopper so we'll see how she does first off the edge work. Yes, edge works very, very well. Okay. Now we've cut through to the side of the backbone. Just barely made a save. 
Okay. Well, rib chopper works. Did a fine job on half the carpets. I'm going to do a repeat. A little different angle. Slice. Just about broke through. Should give it a good whack, but I'm afraid I'm going to drop it. There we go. So that's about as clean a backbone as I think you're ever going to see. And here are my heroic hound dogs, and these include Hera sitting up, and my half dog Fred. And here is a carcass after it's been stripped of its ribs with a rib chopper. And my newly granted U.S. trademark for my company, Hovey's Knives of China. And some of my Hovey's Knives of China blades. More of them displayed here on one inch pegboard. And my outdoor books. Now among my prize winning books are Backyard Deer Hunting, Extreme Muzzle Loading, Crossbow Hunting, and practical bow fishing. I also have a series of e-books on muzzleloading, including muzzleloaders for hunters, and shooting and maintaining your muzzleloader. The Billy Joe Ribudov rib chopper and the Aspen Leaf Skinner did very well on working up that hog. Now the Dexter boning knife had a loose blade because I'd had only one pin to retain it in its relatively short tang. So this is going to be replaced. For more information on Hovey's Knives of China, you can go to the blog below. For more information on my books, blogs, and more than 625 videos, you can go to my website, www.hoveysmith.com. Good hunting and good eating from the outdoors. Goodbye, and God bless.